Hey everybody, Jake here, and today we're finally going to take a look at the Twisby Go. This is Twisby's newest entry in the entry level fountain pen market. Um, it's pretty compelling. I, I like what they've done here. They took a very unique approach to it, and they did it in a very Twisby way. And I'm glad that they stuck to their kind of their roots and didn't go too far out of range for anything. So let's go ahead and jump into it. First up, the size comparison. So here we have it against the Twisby Eco T, this is the yellow green model, the Twisby 580 All, and the Twisby VAC 700. So it's a little bit smaller than all of these pens. It's probably closest to the 580, but it's still a pretty good sized pen, especially when uncapped. It does go into the cap a tad bit farther than some of these other pens. And you'll see that in the uncapped comparison. Now you can see that when it's uncapped, it catches up a little bit better. It's about the same size as the 580, uh, about the same size as the VAC 700, a little bit shorter than the Eco, but the Eco is, you know, fairly long uncapped. So uncapped, it comes up and catches up with the rest of the Twisby pack, at least, very, very well. Here it is against the real competition. Now it does directly, you know, pretty much compete with the Twisby Eco as well. But a lot of people are going to be putting this up against the Pilot Metropolitan and to a probably lesser degree, the Lamy Safari. Now, it's about the same price as the Metropolitan. And it comes up to about the same size. It's a touch shorter. Um, same with the Safari, just a little bit shorter. This is actually an all-star, but the same size. So it's a little bit shorter than those two, but not by much. It's also quite a bit wider. So if you appreciate a bit of a wider pen, this might be the one to go to. Now you can see that when it's uncapped, it catches up with the Lamy Safari, or All-Star in this case, and beats out the um, Pilot Metropolitan by just a little bit. It's not much, but it's there. Uh, the grip section is also a little bit wider than both of those, so like I said, if that's something you care about, definitely keep that in mind when you're deciding on which one of these to get. Alright, on to what I like about the pen. First up, the nib and the flow. Oh gosh. Okay, so uh, I got this in a broad. You can maybe see it. Nope, it's covered up by ink at the moment. It sits right there. Um, last time I had this filled up, it had a little pool there, and you can see the B. Anyway, broad nib, it writes fantastic. This is a wonderful, wonderful nib. I love Twisby's nib designs. You can see it there. They have that kind of um, very unique pattern that they have on the finial as well. Great nib, really, really good flow. A basic Twisby feed, so be careful with those fins. Um, if you're pulling the nib and feed out, they can, they can mess up. But it writes so, so well. The flow is good. The nib is extremely, extremely smooth. It's right up there with my VAC 700 in terms of smoothness and probably beats out my 580 broad nib. But it's, it's, a, it's just a fantastic, fantastic nib. Really, really good work. And that's one thing that I absolutely love about Twisby over Lamy and Pilot is just their nibs are just, just amazing. Fantastic nibs. The biggest selling point of this pen is probably the filling mechanism though. So I'll go ahead and insert a clip of me filling the pen. But it's very, very simplistic. You can push down the plunger and you dip it into the ink bottle, let it go, and it fills up. It's super, super easy to do, very, very easy to clean, and it's just, it's just fantastic. This is actually the pen that I'm using for the first day of the uh, 30 inks, 30 days challenge. So it's it's nice. This pen's very easy to fill. It's super quick, very easy to clean. I love the filling mechanism on this thing. How it basically works is there's a little plunger with a spring. Um, I'll pull down the spring a little bit here to show you. You compress it, and then it works almost like a Kind of like the VAC 700 system, but it pushes itself back. Now, because of that, it takes up a lot of space. Um, you still do get a, a pretty decent ink capacity, though. I'll unscrew it one more time to kind of show you here. You can see you get from here to here with ink capacity. Um, you can check out the exact capacity on GouletPens.com. Um, I think it's around one and a half mils. It's pretty good. A little bit more than a uh, converter will get you in most cases. 
the section on this thing is very, very close to the Eco T as well. It's a little bit more pronounced in its shape. I'll go ahead and grab the Eco T here and I'll show you what I mean. It's that same kind of triangular grip. So you can kind of see what I'm talking about, especially if we look down at the pins. So you won't be able to tell on the Eco T, but you can definitely tell on the Go where those sections are. It's the same thing on the Eco T, it's just not nearly as pronounced. Um, the grip section is still triangular, and some people are not going to like this because it's similar to the shape of the Lamy Safari and All Star and stuff like that. Um, as far as the sections go, but unlike those pens, this doesn't traverse all the way up the section. It's really only as you get right down here. So I don't hold the pen here. I hold it back about here, and it's perfectly round. It's it it only is shaped to about there. Past that point, it's it's just a normal round section. It's fantastic. It slopes up quite well. So if you like a larger section, you can kind of go back. If you like a very very thin section, you can come all the way up here to the very front. And you're gonna kind of get that that triangular um, almost corrective grip, but it's a very this material is also fairly nice. It's a almost like a soft touch plastic. It's very unique. It doesn't really match the plastic on the rest of the body or on the cap for that matter, but it's it's pretty good. The color does kind of match the cap insert here. Um, you can see that they're that same kind of um, somewhat opaque trans transparent plastic. It's pretty nice. Size and weight of this thing are fantastic as well. Um, it's not super heavy. I do like heavier pens. I, that's why I like the um, all line of Twisby's pens because they're just aluminum, adds a bit more weight to them. Um, this isn't bad though, probably because the spring adds a bit of weight and and stuff like that, but it, it feels okay. It's I would prefer for it to be a little heavier, but it's certainly not bad. The size is nice um, where I grip it. There's you know enough of an overreach in my hand where I'm not having to hold it weird. If you hold it down a little bit farther, you can get a little bit more. If you hold it way back here, it, it's still, at least for my hands, it's going to be fairly, fairly comfortable. But I hold it right around here, and I get plenty of, plenty of space. Um, again, it's a fairly wide pen, especially when compared to some of the other beginner pens, which are usually smaller. This is a bit of a departure from that. Um, because of that, there's a bit of a step up, but it's not too bad. It's, it's mitigated fairly well because of how they taper the the section up so it, it feels pretty good in your hand or at least my hand spin can be disassembled very very easily um, if you watch my unboxing video for it you can go and see that uh, basically what you'll do is you you don't have to pull the spring down but that little blue top there uh, this piece right here you can twist it but you don't twist it counterclockwise twist it clockwise and it will come undone at that point you can remove the spring and pull out the uh, this little bar here and I'll pull the plunger and everything like that so if you want to disassemble this pen you can you can do it without tools so unlike the other Twisbees this one doesn't include any which isn't in my opinion is not a bad thing um, that's probably how they cut down on cost at least a little bit so it's pretty helpful um, it's a very 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 simplistic mechanism to disassemble and I assume that if you had to clean it out for whatever reason very thoroughly you could do it fairly easily without much fuss the cap on here is very very secure um, so when you open it it takes a decent bit of force it it clicks on very audibly very very nice click it's um, a lot more better on there than say the the Metropolitan it's it's a bit more difficult to pull off than that or the uh, Safari it's it's on there very very well this is not going to come off unless you're pulling on it at least in my experience so that's that's nice to some people it almost bothers me because there's no clip um it's difficult to uncap one-handed which I can do very easily with the Safari I could just kind of push up right there and it comes off but you know, it's it's on there. It's very secure, and especially for the kind of school um, setting, or you just want to toss this in a bag or something like that. You know, it's a pretty useful feature to have. The price on this is probably the biggest selling point. These are eighteen ninety nine, I think, seventeen ninety nine, somewhere up there between eighteen and nineteen dollars, and that's amazing um, for the Twisby brand. You know, to go this low, which they had already really knocked out of the park with the Eco. 
it's it's impressive. Personally, I still prefer the Eco. That's just me though. For for a beginner, if someone asked me, hey, what do you think would be probably the best beginner fountain pen, it's gonna be this one. The filling mechanism is built in, it's super easy to operate, and the price is low. People can get it, you can get it as a gift for people. It's it's amazing. It's just a fantastic price point. Um, I almost wish they'd dip down to maybe 15. I don't know if that was possible or not, but I think that would have helped sell it just a little bit more. But this is this is a great, great price on this pen. The body threads on this are very chunky. You're going to be unscrewing this part a decent bit because you're going to be refilling it. So these threads are very, very smooth. There's no machining issues that I can tell. Um, I haven't had any cross-threading issues or anything like that. They're very, very nice to operate. And um, if you get a bit of a spin going, you can kind of, let's see. Well, of course, now I can't do it. You can almost spin it off completely on its own um, with just one good twist, which is very useful um, to fidget with when you're bored at work, which is what I do. The, the um, last thing that I'm going to mention that I like about this pen is going to be the packaging. So if you watch my unboxing video, you've already seen this. But basically, it comes like this, which is a bit smaller than the other Twisby packaging, and you just pull it out. Um, you can... Definitely remove that sticker to give this to somebody. It's very nice. It is a plastic. Um, just lifts off. There's a piece of foam that bends in and very easy filling instructions. It's basic, but it's durable and it looks nice. This packaging looks fantastic. And you're not getting that quality with the, especially with the Safari. Its packaging to me is just, it's bland, you know. Uh, the the Pilot Metropolitan has some okay packaging, but the Twisby really, 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 really sells it for me, and I really like um, packaging on on stuff, especially when they include it at that lower price. That's just that's just the icing on the cake. On to the neutral. First off, the build quality on this. Um, so it's low price. I understand that, but the plastic on the Safari even though it's $10 more, is far superior. The plastic on the Eco is vastly superior. This isn't bad, though. But unlike the other Twizy pens, there are injection molding lines, which you can kind of see right there. Um, that's a little bit of an annoyance. And the plastic in general just doesn't feel that good. The one part of this pen that does feel very nice is the grip section. It's 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 pretty good. Um, I don't feel like any part of the body is going to break or anything. There's you know fairly substantial plastic on there. Uh, most of the stuff is fairly thick. There is a bit of an issue I have with the cap, but we'll get to that later. But overall build quality feels okay, not great. Last thing is this little keychain hole thing. Instead of doing a clip on this, which I understand because it probably would have came out like the Platinum Preppy clip where it's just plastic. Um, I kind of, because there's barely any metal on this pen. Um, so I, I don't really have hold anything against them for not including a clip at all, but this thing is very annoying. Um, it just kind of gets in the way and messes with the already questionable aesthetic for me. Um, however, it does function as a roll stop, which is nice. Um, if you want to clip this to a keychain or something like that, or, you know, attach it to your school bag and you can just uncap the pen and write with it and then put it back. It's useful for that. Clip it to your belt, whatever. I don't know what people do with pens with this particular little loop thing, but you can certainly do it. So that's, it's on there. I'm just not a big fan of it. On to the dislike. So the biggest thing for me is the design. This pen is fugly. This is an awful looking pen. This looks terrible. Um, I, I typically love Twisby's aesthetic. Their pens are just, I, I, I think they're gorgeous. They do great, great work with these. They look fantastic especially their Diamond 580 line. Love them. The Ecos look pretty good. The VAC 700 looks amazing. Just They're great. They're simplistic with a touch of flair. They're wonderful. This is not simplistic. I don't like it. Um, closed, it looks terrible. You have that little hump thing. You have, if I can get it to focus here, you have Twisby Go in the plastic there. You have lines coming from the the cap, you have the cap seal, you have the nib in there, the feed, the ink window, you have all these threads very visible, you have this whole spring, this back mechanism, you have a hole back here for some reason, more little lines, it just, it's a mess to me, it is, there's too much going on here, um, in my opinion. 
So people that are getting an office pin around this price are going to go with the Metropolitan because it looks simplistic. I prefer this pin over the Metropolitan, but look-wise, it's just not great. And even when you uncap it, it helps a little bit. I think it looks a lot, lot better in the hand uncapped, but it's still not wonderful. There's just too much going on here for me, and I'm just not into it. Last thing is the pla plastic on the, uh, the cap here. So let me show you something. So the blue plastic on the right is for the uh that's kind of where the uh for spring mechanism cover thing is you can see it is about the same uh thickness as the cap plastic however it's completely different it is very durable and very hard this cap plastic is not and i can bend it very very easily the diameter is a little bit larger so that may be part of it but it's very very brittle feeling this is the worst part of the pen to me this this cap feels like garbage it just it's such a massive weird thing to feel a twisby pen that doesn't feel great and that might be what's throwing me off but it feels like absolute crap i hate this cap it's it's awful apart from just looking bad it feels very brittle it feels fragile and it feels like i could crush it if i do anything wrong to it so i'm a bit more careful with this pen than i would be with you know the safari or the metropolitan so that's that's just me on to the writing sample all right so this is the twisby go with a broad nib I was at a pen store one time and I kept calling broad bold and the guy looked at me like I was insane and then I realized I probably sounded very stupid but that's neither here nor there but every time I use a broad nib I think of that and it just embarrasses me so much it's just a stupid thing to be embarrassed about too it's an honest mistake no one uses the word broad in, in everyday life it just doesn't happen bold yeah people can be bold font can be bold Broad font's not broad. Font's never broad. So Twisby Go with a broad nib. This is Palette de Roshizuku Ama Iro, which in my opinion is just a fantastic match for this sapphire blue. Um, this also comes in a smoke finish, which is like uh, kind of like this color plastic here on the Vex 700. So it's a bit more of a dark black gray. Um, I think it's a little bit lighter than that, but it's you know pretty close to that. Um, so this broad nib is very, very smooth. It's it's fantastic. Um, even in reverse writing, it's it's pretty smooth, to be honest. I'm, I'm actually very, very surprised. So we're going to do a reverse writing line, a normal line, and then a line with some pressure. So you can get a little bit of line variation out of this. It's not going to be a lot. This is a steel nib. The very, Twisby nibs especially seem to be um, maybe a little stiffer than most steel nibs. But they're very, very smooth, so I, I typically forgive it. But the, it writes very well. The flow is reliable. You notice there's no skips or anything. I've done nothing to the nib that is completely out of box, and it writes superb. Conclusion time. Okay, um, you know, when I first unboxed this, unboxed this, you'll notice I kind of had a lukewarm response. I was not impressed by it. I didn't see what all the hype had been about. I was really, really disappointed at first. And now I honestly, this is probably going to be my go-to recommendation. It's going to replace the Twisby Eco as the number one beginner fountain pen, in my opinion, um, because it's, it's cheaper. It's much easier to fill for people. There's no maintenance. And it's, it's just simplistic. Is it ugly? Yes, it is ugly as sin. I hate the look of this thing. It's miserable. I'll probably never use this pen again. I don't know, maybe not. But my wife loves it. She likes the design of it. She loves the nib. The filling mechanism is by far her favorite part. And she, I most, I usually fill her pens. But she filled this one up for the first time by herself. I was very proud of her. It's just unintimidating. Uh, the spring takes a little bit of force. Um to actuate she wasn't quite able to get it very well the first time but 
Um, so for children, it might be a little bit of an issue, the spring tension. But an, an adult, I think, should be able to feel this fairly easily. So it's just, it's a fantastic pen. It writes well, it performs well, which is the biggest part to me in general. And the filling mechanism is fantastic. Build quality isn't great, but at this price range, that's typically what you're getting. Twisby usually bats way above their pay grade. And if you ask me, I think the Eco should probably be about $40. This one should probably be about 30 The fact that they're getting it down to 18 is amazing. I think it's a wonderful, wonderful price for this. And even if you're just curious about this pen, definitely check it out. I think the resale value on this is going to be pretty good. They've been very popular. And I have absolutely no doubt they're going to do limited edition colors of this. I'm very excited. Um, not necessarily for me, but I think it'll make a great gift for my wife. And other people in general, if they see a color they like, it's going to sell them all the more on a pen. They start off strong with the blue and the kind of grayish black, but I, I could definitely see some pinks and greens and things like that coming up in the future. So overall, this is just a fantastic pen. It writes super, super well. It's awful looking, but in the grand scheme of things, that really doesn't matter when you're stacking it up with other pens in this territory because it outperforms most of them. Any of them that I've used in the under $20 price range freaking blows them away. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Um, if you like what you see here, feel free to subscribe. I will have other reviews coming out. This week's going to be extremely busy for me. And if you have any questions, leave them down in the comments. I'll be more than happy to, to answer them for you. Um, or if you would like a bit more of a detailed disassembly and filling, anything like that, let me know. Thanks, guys. Bye.